Welcome to Suburban Artistry. Today we're going to talk about how you can cut your own mats, make your own decisions, and save even more money on your art. Mats are going to get dirty in the blink of an eye, so you need to make sure you have a really clean table or work on some big clean paper, perhaps wrapping paper. You're going to need to choose the color of your mat and the width of your mat. So I like to set the artwork on top and kind of space it to the edge and see what looks good. You'll also need to keep in mind the frame that you want to use and the available sizes of frames. For this artwork, I think two inches looks really good. You can look at different colors. I usually go black or white, and here you can see the light does not look very good with the white, but this darker print does look a lot better with the white. Since I'm matting the image on the left today, I'll be using the dark mat. Measure the art itself and not the surface that it's on. So blank edges, don't worry about those. When you measure 8x10 photographs, sometimes you'll see things that go closer to the edge, and that depends how much of the film is being used. The one on the left actually had to crop out some of the image on the film, and you can see that this actually equals a 1 inch difference. Now let's flip this over to the back side so we can draw on the measurements. For an artwork like this where there are no borders, measure the whole thing. Now back to our photo. So measuring the length of the photo, add two inches for the left side of the mat, two inches for the right side of the mat, and then take away a half inch. That's a quarter inch for the left and for the right. You need to overlap so that way your image doesn't pop through the window when you glue it in place. I'm doing this measurement three different times and leaning over to make sure that my mark is actually where I think it is. And when I draw a line through those three marks in the best way, it's less likely that it's going to be crooked. If you only do one or two marks, that's a lot more likely. Then I need to do the same thing for the height. The height of the photo itself plus the two inches for the bottom, two inches for the top, and then back a half inch for the overlap. And then take that same measurement in three different places, and then connect those three dots. Now we're gonna start measuring the window. So I mark off two inches three different times from the left edge and then join that line, not going all the way to my outer edges. This helps differentiate the window from the outside edge. Then I do that for the top, two inches down from the top edge, join my three marks. The same for the right side, two inches from the right edge. Join those marks then the bottom, two inches from the bottom edge. When measuring, make sure that you use a really sharp pencil and that your ruler is perfectly matched with the edge. Anything that's gonna get removed, I mark with an X. Now it's time to cut. This one has a hinge to it and a bottom raised edge for you to place your mat. Place some scrap mat under your bar to prevent damage to your mat cutter. And then you do your outside cuts first using a straight cutter. Match your pencil marks to the right side of the bar and then place the straight cutter into the channel. Brace your left hand to hold the mat down and then drag your right hand across the mat as many times as you need to for it to cut all the way through. Push your mat against that bottom edge to make sure it stays square. For the window, you're going to be using the angle cutter, and this is going to create a diagonal edge that you will see from the front of the mat. Place the angle cutter on the track, match the white line at the center of it with your pencil mark, and then push with your finger to extend the blade, and then drag it down until that line matches your other pencil mark. 
repeat this until it's cut all the way through. Rotate it and do the same thing to your other side, making sure that you're cutting your angle in the right direction. Be sure to match up the white line with your pencil marks at the start and the end points as accurately as possible. Otherwise, you may not make it all the way to the corners or you may go a little too far which will cause little cuts to be in your corners. Your window will still come out, but it won't be as neat as you might want it to be. Once you've done this to all four sides, your window should pop right out. This one was hanging on by a tiny little bit, which is easily corrected with a light touch and an X-Acto knife. This is the other commonly found style of mat cutter. This is the compact one, which is a couple feet shorter than the other one. This one works on a spring rather than a hinge. This one is much smaller in size which makes it easier to store, but you might be limited in some of the cuts you can do. This, you can see, wouldn't quite fit all the way through between those springs, so I'm going to have to trim a little bit of this mat off before it can fit in. This has a bar that can screw into place with some measurements to help you mark it out specifically to help you cut the edges of your mats the same distance each time. This bar tightens and locks into place by turning right. Left will loosen it, but you have to push down on the screws. The measurements will be taken from the top part and that'll tell you how wide your edges of your mat are. I'm demonstrating here how you can do extremely long cuts on this mat cutter as long as they only need to go a few inches into the mat. The mat has fit under the spring and is braced against that bar and it can slide up and down and stay braced so that way your cut is the same no matter where you go. So I start the cut from the top and once that's gone all the way through, I slide and then I'm able to continue that same cut. This is an edge cut, so the straight cutter could be used or like an X-Acto knife or box cutter as I'm doing here. Any of your straight cuts can be done by hand on a cutting mat with a ruler, preferably metal. Just brace with your left hand. You may need to move that hand so it doesn't shift and then cut through with your right. I've removed the bar. Now that I've trimmed some off of this large mat, it can fit between the two springs. So now I'm doing the edge cuts. I'm lining up my pencil marks with the center track. Either use a straight cutter attachment like before or an X-Acto knife like I'm doing here. You have to make sure that you hold it at a very straight angle and press left against the track. Hold that bar down hard with your left hand so it doesn't move. This is my last edge cut. And now I'm ready to cut out the window. I need to place my bar back on. I've locked it into the two inch spot. This is gonna allow me to brace the canvas against this while I do all of my window cuts. This angle cutter is gonna look very similar, except this one is going to be a push instead of a pull, so the blade extends using your thumb. Start from the bottom and match the white line to your pencil mark, then push across the mat and stop at the top pencil mark. Then rotate and repeat this on the other sides. For the best results, you need to use very sharp blades. 
This means swapping them out pretty often. It's very easy to change them out, they just screw down. You can also flip them so you can use both sides of the blade. If there's any paper hanging on, then you will need to do a little bit of sandpaper to smooth out those edges. If you accidentally tear, especially on a black mat, then you can use a little bit of Sharpie or black paint to disguise that area. It isn't usually very noticeable. Small dented corners aren't usually a problem as they will be covered by a frame. Then it's time to mount. Make sure that you're on a clean table. A couple pieces of tape will help you place your artwork within the mat so that way none of the edges are showing. This is where the quarter inch on each side is really important, otherwise it can be really hard to place the mat. Once you have it in the right spot, you can flip it over and place the rest of your tape. It's best to use archival tape if you can, so that way it doesn't have acid. It can also look really nice to double mat your work. Have another mat in an opposing color and then cut the window bigger. When you do those window measurements, simply reduce a quarter of an inch on each side. To get a mat this size professionally cut, it would have cost me $14, but $28 if I kept it as a double mat. I spent only $13 buying a piece of mat board that can cut six different mats for this size. And then there's the additional windows that I could use to make mats for smaller artworks. Get yourselves a mat cutter on sale or used. Mine came from Recreative Art Thrift Store for only $30. Comment any questions about matting or suggestions for other videos. Like and subscribe, and happy matting. See you all next time.